how did Benjamin Franklin discover about electricity and what did he discover about electricity once he had heard about it? Well, I'll tell you, and along the way, I'll tell you about the origin of positive and negative charges, the longest standing rule of physics, a terrifying experiment involving lightning, and a simple mistake that still plagues us today. Ready? Let's go. Electricity, 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 electricity. In 1746, an Englishman named Peter Collinson read an article about some wonderful German experiments involving electricity, like giving electric kisses and electrifying a person and using a spark from that person to light alcohol on fire. Collinson was a Quaker merchant and amateur scientist who was friends with Benjamin Franklin in Philadelphia. Yes, that Ben Franklin, the one who helped write the Declaration of Independence and who was frowning on the $100 bill. Collinson sent Franklin a copy of the magazine in a glass tube with a shipment of other materials for his library. Franklin was instantly hooked. Quote, for my part, I never was before engaged in any study that so totally engrossed my attention and my time as this has lately done, and my friends come continuously in crowds to see them. I have, during some months past, had little leisure for anything else. At the time, Franklin was 40 years old. He had a successful printing shop, post office, and stationery shop, and only two children to support, 15-year-old William and three-year-old Sally. In comparison, Franklin was from a family of 17 children, seven from his father's first wife, who died in childbirth, and 10 from Ben's mother, who survived bearing 10 children and raising 17. Around this time, Franklin found a manager for his business and felt that he was, quote, free to having no other task than I should like to give myself, with leisure to read, make experiments, and converse at large with such ingenious and worthy men as are pleased to honor me with their acquaintance. Franklin began writing Collinson, thanking him for his kind present and giving him his theories about electricity. One of the first things he related after he related how much fun electricity was, was that electricity seemed to come from and go to a sharp point. This was to be vital for the invention of the lightning rod, which we'll get to in a little bit. Meanwhile, he built his own electricity machine, but unlike other machines at the time, which had one person to spin the wheel and a separate person to rub with the wheel with their bare hand, Franklin's had a brush rub against the glass. Interestingly, you could charge up another person by putting them on wax and having them either touch the spinning glass or the brush. Because of this, Franklin quickly came to the theory, contrary to all of those before him, that you cannot create or destroy charge, only move it. In other words, all things contain charges, and when you rub them, you move some of the charges onto the other object and you can either have an excess of charge or a lack of charge. This is called conservation of charge and is the longest standing rule of physics. Franklin thought if you rub glass with wool, the glass lost electrical fire and the wool gained electrical fire. He gave these processes a name that we're stuck with today. If something has too much electrical fire, it's charged positively, too little charged negatively, and just the right amount charged neutrally. His proof was that if you charged up two people by having one touch the glass and one touch the brush, they could give each other a terrible shock, but after that they would both be uncharged. In other words, the glass person got the equal and opposite charge of the brush person. It was decidedly a shopkeeper's physics with all the pluses and minuses like an accountant's ledger, and it was almost correct. See, one of the problems is if you see a spark or experience one, it's impossible to tell which direction it's going in. It is just as painful to lose electrons as it is to gain electrons. Franklin arbitrarily decided that the positive charges were the ones that were moving. It took a further 150 years to realize electrical fire that was moving was really electrons and they are negative. So when we think electricity flows one way, it really flows the other way. Oops, we are still stuck with this mistake today. If, for example, you connect a battery to a light bulb, we would say that the current flows from positive to negative. 
when we know what is really going on is that the tiny negative electrons are flowing the other way. Once again, oops. Still, despite that mistake, Franklin's observation that everything contains charge and you can only move it, not create it or destroy it, was a brilliant observation and changed how people understood electricity, at least for the few people who read Franklin and understood him. Meanwhile, Franklin was not only making up new rules for electricity, he was also having a lot of fun. He came up with many new ingenious demonstrations like flying spiders and putting gold leaf on the side of a book and discharging a Leyden jar across it so that the gold would sparkle and glow to amuse his friends and visitors. He did have a little trouble when he tried to electrically kill his turkey for Christmas and he almost electrocuted himself. But in general, he seemed to find electricity endlessly amusing. While playing with his electricity machine and trying to electrocute turkeys, Franklin started to think about lightning. He became convinced that it was the same as the sparks he got at home, but on a larger scale. On November 7, 1749, Franklin wrote his friend a list of 12 similarities between sparks and lightning. On July 29, 1750, Franklin came up with a terrifying experiment to test whether lightning was caused because the clouds were electrified. He proposed you could put a large iron rod in a tiny house, like a guard house or what he called a sentry box. He thought if a cloud passed by, if the clouds were electrified, then the rod would also be electrified by induction, moving charges at a distance and could produce sparks. Notice that despite most layman's impressions at the time and even today, Franklin was assuming that the metal rod would create sparks because it was near an electrified cloud, not because it was hit by lightning. It was this experiment, the soldier in the box one, that thrust Franklin into international fame. See, in 1749, Collinson decided to publish Franklin's letters as a book. When they did, it initially did not do that well in England. Ever the politician, Franklin realized that his ideas of moving positive and negative charges would have an even harder time in France as it was contrary to the prevailing theory created by a Frenchman named Charles Francois Cisternay de Fay. Now, de Fay had died from smallpox in 1739, but his protege, a man named Nolet, seemed unlikely to enjoy Franklin's work. Therefore, Franklin happened to send it to Nolet's rival, a pompous man named Buffon. Buffon had no previous interest in electricity, but he was delighted to humiliate a rival. And that story, and how it led to the lightning rod, as well as Franklin's famous kite experiment, is next time on The Secret History of Electricity. Electricity, 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 electricity. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember to give it a big thumbs up. I always appreciate that. Also, if you want to know how the Leyden jar works and you haven't seen my last video, please check it out. Thanks and have a good day.